Hello everyone, I am Liana with Music Academy International Inc. and welcome to the greatest piano channel on the internet, period. <laughs> so in this uh, video I'm gonna do a um, question and answer series. Again, thank you so much, thank you so much for your question. I have, I piled up here lots of questions from your emails and from Facebook and from Instagram and from the Patreon site. <laughs> so um, we having very important questions that needs to be answered correctly from my perspective. <laughs> I, so I'm having here question number one, how to find the right song for me? Good question. Number two, how to set goals? Very good question. How to practice slow? That's a really good question. Slow and more slow. How to break up the score? Very important. Let's do that. What kind of teacher do I need? Do I need one? Okay, we will see. Then we have in here, how long should I practice? How to learn quick a piece? Okay, we all want quick. Yes, that's gonna come. What to practice in a session? That's good, in a practice session. Then we having coordination exercises for beginners. Absolutely. Why should I play scales? We're gonna get through it. Why arpeggios and why versions? <laughs> why should I learn about arpeggio and his inversions? What the heck are them? So we're gonna go there. Chord practice, practice exercise. And ultimately, I have one more classical pieces that I believe you should learn and why. All right? You like that, right? So give me a like and let's get going with number one. Hello, everybody, and <laughs> welcome back to part number two. Question is, how to practice slow? <sighs> slow. Such hard. Okay, I prepared for you three different uh, situations. Okay, so we having. I'm gonna go first with the fingers exercise. A Hannon. I just picked one by just one. You know that is number five. Then I'm gonna go a little tiny bit on the another example on the sonatina in C major. This one. <laughs> in my playlist under classical tutorials. I believe it's another three part tutorial or actually even more because it's part one, part two, part three. Don't remember, check it out over there. I'm gonna leave the link into the description. And then I'm gonna go with Chopin in a minor, uh, the waltz that everybody knows it. And again, I do have the full tutorial over there and goes up and down and stuff like that. So first of all, I want to go with this exercise um, of Hannon. Okay, before we go in, let's understand why we need to practice slow. Well, so the point is this. <laughs> Nobody likes to practice slow. Nobody. In my entire 30 years of <laughs> teaching, 98 percent of my students and believe me I taught from six years old to 81 years old. <laughs> I have students all ages and believe me okay uh, nobody wants to practice so I, I have only one student that she really really enjoyed to practice slow and that student actually was a ballerina and as we speaking <laughs> today she is a prim ballerina um, in, um, I think it's in Orlando or so, uh, ballet corps or something. Anyhow, she is already on big stage and so, and she was practicing one by one. She understood from the beginning, 
what it means to practice slow. So the point is when you're going to a piano lessons or you just sing a song, you know, you pick up a song as we were uh, talking before, you know, you already have it in your ear how it's supposed to be done, right? So it's like you already think like, oh my God, it's gonna be such a good cake. Like I wanna eat this cake and so. But you need to understand that the process to get to um, uh, eat a cake, <laughs> we need to prepare. So you're not the last person to eat. You actually, you are the cook <laughs> that needs to prepare the and create the cake. So you need to prepare the eggs and the flour. Well, I'm a woman. I don't know what to say. Or even, even let's say you want to have a car, right? So you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have this, I don't know, Mercedes, <laughs> BMW, or Lexus, or I don't know, and a Porsche, and I'm going to go fa fast or stuff like that, right? But at this moment in time, you are not the last person. You're not the person who is listening. You are creating that car. So you need to take piece by piece by piece by piece, creating each piece at a time, and then put it all together, right? So if I'm going back to the bake cake, <laughs> to the baking, you know, to the cake, you need to prepare the eggs, you need to prepare the flour, you need to make the dough and then separate, make the cream and separate, I don't know, make something else, the, the, the whipped cream, <laughs> right? You got to prepare them separately. You got to mix them and then put it to bake for whatever time in the certain, certain, not too high, not too low temperature, and then put it all together, the cream and stuff, and finally decorate. And finally, you, you, <laughs> you present the cake that is done, and you are, and it's paying off because you're like, oh, there's such a good cake, and everybody's the amazed. It's paying off all the time. It will pay off. But before we go in there, we definitely need to go one by one, all right? Oh, did I talk too much? Oh my God, you could skip all this. <laughs> yeah, I think I talked too much, but I want you to understand to uh, um, switch the perspective in which you just having a cake and to create a cake, or you wanna drive the Mercedes or the high sports and car, right? <laughs> you gotta, actually make the car right now, not just driving it. And then you will drive it too, because you are a creator, right? So I'm gonna go with this exercise. Uh, the end result, it will this. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, my fingers are not going as fast, right? Or as I presented in the, Journey to 99 series. You know, and so on and so forth. So this technique is not coming out of nowhere. It's coming after hours and hours and hours and I'm calling off hammering, all right? Like that. understand what means as slow, right? So if I would go here, I'm putting the metronome first. So first step is you to are able to play it. You got the point, right? So this is a seven tip, right? So what's happening in this stage, actually you are grounding, I'm calling as well the grounding uh, uh, time, when you are grounding your fingers into, you grounding. So from the mental, 
processing, even seeing a song and analyzing what the notes are there, it's gonna become a skill. It's gonna become a skill. So you need to repeat and repeat and repeat, repeat the same thing over and over again. How long you're gonna repeat? I'm gonna tell you in a second. I'm coming back, okay. Right now, once you repeat and then you really, really know I'm talking about the hand, then you can go a little tiny bit more, right? Like from 70, I'm gonna go right now, I think it's uh, 85. <laughs> another 10 from 60 to 70, 70 to 80, or just to 85, and then 80, 85, 85, 90, only when you start feeling bored of what you're doing, <laughs> and only when you feel so comfortable that the speeding up process, it's, com it's coming organically. You can push it a very little bit, but if you push it too much, then you know what's gonna happen. Your hand is gonna get tense over here and you will not be able to achieve much, much speed in a long distance. You might be able to achieve a little pattern here and there, but on a long distance, it's not going to work. So let the process just go. It's like even growing muscles. You cannot get, you know, I know my son because he's a bodybuilder. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'm a musician and he's a bodybuilder. I love that. And uh, his muscle, I know how much he worked at the gym. <laughs> and did not came out of nothing muscle to, you know, pretty big muscle. They were like hours or even twice a day and, and pain. Oh my God. Oh my God. Believe me. It was Every day was a painful day for me to watch. I'm like, why are you doing this? and he really wanted so anyhow so we're going back on the piano <laughs> right so uh you really gotta go so when you increase the weights you know i don't know if that would relate with you you know maybe you are a guy there that wants you know so you gotta do a lot of repetitions with the same amount of weights when you feel that it's easy that's when you can increase with a little bit another pound or two or five or whatever it is, okay? So here is the same thing. You can increase little by little from 70 to 75, 75 to 80, 80 to 85, and you don't increase your speed and you work with the metronome. This is the metronome. That's your Bible. <laughs> That's your friend. You gotta, you hate it and love it. Hate it and love it. I don't like it. Believe me. I never liked the metronome. But it works. It works and I'm still using it. So right now it's not I don't love it. I don't hate it. It just works. And then I put it here and say, you're going to tell me how good I am and how fast I can go or I cannot go. <laughs> okay. What are my limitations and when I do need to pull back. Right? All right. So right now, let's go further. Let's move on uh, on the same idea of the uh, how slow, what means to practice slow on the Sonatina Opus 36, number one by Clementi. <laughs> of course it's keeping me company and he's always wants a treat or something but okay so let's move on so um so uh let's suppose that you are you want to play this one you already have it in your ear and then you are trying to play it uh yeah he's scratching his ears <laughs> and you are trying to play it fast and playing it fast it will sound like that <laughs> That is a no, no, <laughs> no, 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 okay? 
So you need to go as slow as you are. Let's say you do know your right hand and then you do know your left hand that I'm going to talk in the video about how to do that in a video how to break down a piece and how to learn it quickly. So you kind of know it right now and you put it together and it's just a mess, right? So you got to go back extremely slow as you can play this enough smoothly and you're gonna take maybe four bars at a time right and you're gonna go very slow <laughs> Obviously, you can take, you can go much more than seven times, but not less than five times. And try to do it smoothly, as uh, smooth. So you need to pick up your speed. You know that is the slower in which you can actually understand with your brain exactly where goes each finger at any moment in time. Meaning you're not pressing a key without thinking. First you think and then you press the key. <laughs> so that's what I mean that you are in a perfect control where goes each finger. So that's why you need to go very slow. you know it's statistics you need to tell the brain about five times the same thing in order the brain to figure it out what is its role to do it you know because you can have it intellectual how it means and what you need to play but if the fingers are not moving where they're supposed to move then then you don't know the piece this again it's a skill in which you gotta reproduce what is in your brain to you know on the music and create that music you actually you recreate a piece of red notes right you are playing it and create a beautiful music you know in which you are happy and everybody around you are happy after you play it for a while maybe next day you're going to play it again the same speed next day for three four days or something depends again how much you practice or so in which we will touch it in another video how much you should uh, practice right uh, then you can go a little faster again in the first first time we're doing this if you you know have a rhythm hesitation you know I would still consider it's a good run out of seven times as you set the goal to do it today, right? Uh, so what is important in the first stage you is you to play it smooth with the notes together, right and left hand where they're supposed to be. If you have rhythms of um, hesitation, it's still a good run, meaning what? Let's say that you are fine on this, you're fine on here, and then you're not fine quite here, and then you take a little bit extra minute and you think, and then you go here, and then you take another extra minute, and then again. still say it's a good one because you are thinking you thinking before you hit the note so that means you need to be alert 
don't just play for the heck of playing it because I said five times or seven times. If you're messing up and then it's like... <laughs> it's a long video but I will come back on those as well on this situation because on this one it's even more slow for me then you see you know i don't even know ta, ra, ta, it's probably a 60 and then obviously from 60 once you are like it's going smoother you know maybe in two three days or something then you can go a little faster to 70 and then to 75 and then to 80 and so on and so forth until you are where you need to be right so this is about how slow it's slow how slow i should practice so it's as slow as you are comfortable and you're not making mistakes it could be some rhythm hesitation but not notes and hence uh mistakes so try to make it pretty much well done <laughs> not 80 percent because then if you speed it up and then the measures are only like 40 percent uh, 80 percent done speeding up is going to go worse and worse and worse it's going to be 60 percent 50 percent and then faster faster is more and more messy and more messy it needs to be a hundred percent done <laughs> before you go and you increase the speed thank you so much i think this question is from Flavia <laughs> so thank you for this question that was an awesome question and I think this has helped and hit that subscribe and like button and tell me in your comments if you liked it okay and if it was useful thank you so much see you in the next one it's gonna be how to set goals that's a good one okay let's go